Thank you, everyone, and welcome to the uh, third episode of our CR Startup Series, Marketing and Competitor Research Tips for ABA Startups. I am your host, Gabriel Lori. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm a BCBA, and I've been in the field of behavior analysis for about 13 years. Um, along with my background in behavior analysis, I also have a background in business that spans uh, about 16 years. And uh, over the course of that, uh, of those 16 years, I've had, uh, I've supported the business development and, uh, you know, for companies in different areas, including ABA startups. All right. So as a reminder, the information contained in this presentation does not constitute uh, legal or clinical advice. So any legal decisions uh, that you may need to make should always be consulted with an, an attorney. All right, so let's talk about the agenda for today. Uh, today, we're gonna to be going over understanding your competitors and the market need in your area. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about building a website and SEO, uh, utilizing free search listings, managing your brand uh, reputation and reviews, social media and advertising do's and don'ts. Let's take a dive in here. All right, so first thing we're gonna take a look at is understanding the competition. All right, uh, starting with a look at your competition helps you determine how your business stacks up against others like yours in the area, all right? It also helps you identify trends that allow you to improve your value proposition for customers and any marketing gaps that could allow you to serve an underserved segment. So to get started, what you wanna do first is identify the main competitors. Uh, and this can be done by doing a quick Google search uh, for competitors that have your market share in your target and your target clientele. All right. So this is a very simple thing to do. Basically, what you want to do is just open up your laptop, open up your computer, do a Google search within your area of ABA practices, perhaps with the services that you also are, are planning to provide. M write down a list of all the different competitors, you know, whether they're big, small, uh, depending on what you're going to be doing and really kind of uh, get a, a general idea as to you know what your your competition is going to look like uh, so what you want to do is also analyze uh, your competitors online presence right uh, review how they're marketing their business what's their customer experience online online like uh, what is their social media presence like do they blog uh, what's their website what does it look like uh, is it clear to understand their services uh, really take a deep dive in here and kind of do some reconnaissance on your competitors. Uh, take a look at what they're doing with, with you know, are, are they posting online? Do they have a Facebook uh, page? Do they have a LinkedIn? Whatever it is, really start to kind of take a look at uh, what they're doing uh, in terms of social media, what their website looks like. All right. Uh, check their online reviews. Uh, this can make or break a business. Uh, as we all know, if you have bad reviews and they start to, to pile on, that drives potential clients away, uh, right? Because if you have a business and you know people are just not happy and there's an overwhelming amount of bad reviews, that'll really, uh, that can really uh, destroy your business, really. Uh, so you can do this by just checking Google, you can check Yelp, Better Business Bureau, uh, you know, the negative feedback can also, if you look at it, uh, your competitors, it can also help you identify uh, how to improve your services. Uh, it could also identify like strengths and, uh, and weaknesses, uh, and you can also take a look at uh, their their reviews or you know in in a more objective way too. Like, is there anything that you can improve upon? There might be opportunities for you if if you're seeing a a, a pattern with some of the negative reviews. There may be opportunities for you. Uh, to improve on that and maybe capitalize on that. All right. Uh, so we're going to talk about building a website, right? So this is uh, you know something that some people may be familiar with, some people may not be. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that. Okay. So uh, building a website. So obtaining a good uh, domain. This is something that you want to take a look at. Uh, obtaining a good domain essentially is you're going to want to have something that's easy to understand, easy to remember. Think about this for a second. If you have a website that's very, very long, uh, people are not going to remember it. Uh, people are probably going to be turned off by trying to go towards that website. 
you want to look at dot coms, uh, dot co's or dot nets, for example. Uh, those are things that are easier to remember. Dot coms are obviously uh, better because that's what we're all familiar with. So you want to take a look at uh, those types of domains. Keep it short. Keep it simple. Maybe even think of a clever name, something that people are going to be able to identify very quickly. Uh, one rule that I like to go by is if I have to write down your website name, it might be too difficult to remember. It might be too long to remember. Stay away from the difficult ones and keep something uh, that's going to be very simple to, to remember. Okay. All right. Uh, next, pick a platform and hosting provider. Um, what you want to do is pick something, uh, you know, the, the, the platforms out there that are are going to serve your needs? Are they going to serve your, um, you know, are, are they going to provide security? Are they going to provide you with the type of support that you need? Uh, is this something that's going to be uh, something that's going to be easy for you to, to navigate? Um, if you have the opportunities also, there are people that you can, you know, if you can hire a web designer, that's obviously best, uh, but that can be very costly to, to hire a web designer. So you want to take a look at that uh, there may be opportunities for you to do them yourself. There's platforms out there that allow you to just, you know, uh, to be able to, excuse me, sir, a second there, um, to be able to just build on your website, you're on your own. I personally have done it myself. It's not that difficult uh, to do, uh, but, you know, it's up to you. Depending on what your level of comfort is, you want to take a look at that. All right. Uh, let's see here. So one of the things that you want to take a look at as well is designing for optimal uh, experience. So some of the behavior analysts, uh, perhaps in the group here, might be familiar with some of these uh, you know, terms here too, but you really want to minimize the amount of clicks that it takes to do uh, to perform a function within a website. So for example, if I'm looking for services, um, I don't want to have to jump through a lot of hoops to be able to get to where I need to go. So if I need to find uh, perhaps a button to click to find out more information about your uh, services. I don't want to have to jump through a, a bunch of uh, different clicks, different hoops, different pages and things like that. We want to make it as simple as possible um, to be able to find the things that you want within a website. Okay, so you're going, you should really start to think about what kind of images you're going to use. Uh, stay consistent with the branding uh, in your, you know, for your company and what your website's going to look like, uh, your homepage about us, services, locations, contact us. Those are basic pages that you really should have on your website. Try not to make your website humongous, like where it's like people can get lost in them. Simple is better in my opinion. Uh, you know, and especially the, the websites that I've personally, uh, been a part of, uh, it just allows for more engagement. People like to be in and out of websites as quickly as possible, get the value that they want, uh, and then be done. They don't want to get lost in, in navigating your website. So another thing here too, make it clear. Uh, you know, make, make the description of your website or of your services very clear. Uh, make sure that you're targeting this towards your target customer, okay? Like the, the message should be towards your customers. Um, there, it's been said before uh, that you have less than 15 seconds to capture the attention of the visitors on your website. So make it as clear as possible. Think about this for a second. How many times have you ever been on a website and you're trying to figure out what, what this company does, what their services provide, or you're trying to find just basic information? You may get discouraged if you're like me and then just move on to something else. Don't let that happen uh, to your website. Don't let that be your website. Consider these things. Maybe even have another person or another set of eyes take a look at your website once it's done uh, and then ask them questions. Hey, how easy was it to navigate to certain pages? Was it, was it difficult? Did you find it easy? Things like that. That might be very, very helpful. All right. Uh, you also want a CTA, you know, a meaningful CTA within the website so or a call to action as it's called. Uh, you want users to ultimately uh, do something on your website. So whether that's book an appointment, find out more, uh, whatever that is, make sure that you have that really readily, excuse me, readily available uh, to them right there on the website. Like it should be probably on their first page, maybe like a button that says book an appointment, learn more, whatever it is, make it so that it's uh, easy to see and easy to get to. Again, 
if what they're saying is true about uh, you know having less than 15 seconds, which I, I truly believe, you want to make sure that those buttons are right there. It's easy. They should be able to click on it. Okay, I can book an appointment if I want to. Let me find out some more information about this website. That's how it should be. Um, <clears throat> be careful about giving them too many CTAs, by the way, because if you have a bunch of buttons all over the place, you can really confuse people and make things harder uh, for people to navigate your website. So really start to you know consider again like the the uh response effort when it comes to your website like how many clicks does it take to get to, to certain things is is the is it is there your web uh page too busy is there too many things that i should be doing uh things like that so really again i, I think a second set of eyes uh or even more uh would be very helpful for that uh one of the things here too keep in mind update your site regularly uh, because adding new content um, is going to is going to drive traffic to your website. So consider maybe even publishing a blog, uh, you know, monthly. Uh, keep fresh content up there. Uh, you want people to come back to your web your website every so often because there's might be something new that they want to see. Uh, think about the popular websites that perhaps you visit. Um, are they some you know? Is it something that you want to see you know on a regular basis? You don't want something that's like, hey, this was updated last on you know 2021 or something like that it's not exciting people are not going to come to your website uh so you want to make it you know uh enjoyable for people and and want them to keep coming back all right so let's take a look at seo uh or search engine optimization so part of building a website uh you know is is seo and seo uh, basically tells search engines how to index and rank your website uh, to show search engine users, all right? Um, so the better your website design, the content, the higher your site is going to show up on a, on a search engine result. So think about this for a second. Uh, whenever you Google something, when you type in a, a certain keyword, remember the, that first page that comes out, you might have like 10 results or anything like that. That's SEO at work. Basically, what it's doing, uh, you know, sites or search engines like Google, they've indexed your website and basically said, okay, these are the these are the sites that have uh, the the most optimized uh, search engine experience here, uh, based on you know how how you how fast your your website uh, loads, uh, what kind of traffic you're getting in there, things like that. You want to optimize this, and this goes back to a little bit of the domain stuff too. Um, when you're coming up on that first page, uh, think about this. If you have a domain name that's very close to like a popular brand or a popular website, you're probably going to get buried underneath them. So consider your domain name to be something a little different than that if it happens to have a similarity to a big, a big popular uh, brand. You're not going to be able to really compete with some of those big websites, if, especially if they're dumping a lot of money on, on advertising. So if you're just starting out, consider that too, uh, because if you're like me, if you're searching for something on the first page of the website, uh, I'm sorry, of the search uh, results, that's usually where you stick uh, stick to. You'll go to like the first, you know, maybe few instances or whatnot, but unless you're really searching for something, you're not going to go to the second page very often. You're really going to stick to that first page. So try to get to that first page as possible. So make your site very unique. And that includes having a different domain name, things like that. Stay away from those big, big uh, names. All right. So what you can do to, to mitigate this is conduct the keyword uh, research. Um, uh, you know, you want to make sure that the terms that people are searching for on Google, uh, that they, had, they they really closely relate to your business. OK, uh, you can align that. You can include these. Uh, for example, like if you wanted to like uh, have a ABA, uh, ABA in Atlanta, let's say if this is something that you wanted uh, to have within your site. Right. If people are, are searching for that, put that in your blog post, put that in your site, uh, put those keywords in there, because uh, that's something that's going to drive traffic back. And these SEO, uh, the SEO is going to drive uh, traffic to your site, building it up, and then having those search engine results um, you know, uh, show up in that manner, all right? Um, so this can be put into the meta information and the copy of the website. Uh, so basically what you want to do is do a, key, a keyword uh, search out there for popular terms and see how you can implement that or incorporate that into your website. 
All right. One thing you want to take a look at too, and this is extremely important, is fast loading speeds. This affects your SEO uh, greatly. All right. So have you ever been on a website where you know pages take forever to load because there's a huge image or there's something that's you know bogging it down? You don't want that for your website. You want to make sure that it's uh, that it loads pretty quickly. Uh, and that people are able to see images and th see things quickly. Uh, if, you know, Google, for example, if you Google something like this, um, they actually provide a free service too, where you can type in your, your URL and it'll show you how fast your pages are loading and it'll rank it. It'll give you a little percentage and everything like that. It's a very helpful tool because this all builds up that same kind of thing. So when you're uh, searching for pages on Google, this is all taken into account. So faster loading speed, definitely something you want to do. Um, let's see here. All right, so SSL certification. This is something that's extremely important. This is a must, really. Uh, your hosting provider should give you the option to purchase an SSL certificate uh, and or you can request uh, to purchase it uh, from another provider, but you will need to make sure that you're that you maintain an SSL certificate on your website. In case you're not familiar with SSL, that means secure sockets layer. And it's basically standard security technology that establishes an encrypted link between a server and a website. All right. Uh, so that builds trust, too. I'm not sure if you've noticed that, but on the upper left hand side, if you look at the, the domain, you'll see those SSL certificates on there. I'm not comfortable personally giving any credit card information or any personal information if I don't see that certificate on there. So definitely something that's a, a, a must, in my opinion. Uh, one of the things that's super uh, important as well is making your mo uh, your website mobile friendly. All right. So with mobile technology being at the hands of so many, uh, having your website mobile optimized is a must. You're going to want to make sure that your website supports desktop as well as mobile because a lot of people you might be in front of someone you might be having lunch with them and they might they might want to ask you okay what's your website name okay great let me take a look at it if your website looks all jumbled up or it, it doesn't look very appealing and it's on their cell phone they might be turned off and they might move on to something else make sure that it's mobile friendly uh, a lot of people are accessing websites nowadays on on their mobile devices so uh, and this is something that's very common now. Most platform builders on the market offer the ability to, to build a website on mobile and um, you know on the desktop too. I know from personal experience, you can toggle this on so you can preview what it's going to look like on the desktop as you're building your website if you choose to go that path. And you can toggle on what it's going to look like on mobile so you can get an idea as to uh, what it's going to look like. There may be some subtle differences because of design that may, maybe it looks a little bit different. But what you want to do is maintain the similarities between the two. So that way they're more uniform between the desktop and the uh, mobile uh, platform. All right. You also want to have high quality backlinks. All right. So if you're blogging on your website, for example, getting high quality backlinks to your content can help drive more traffic to your site, which will improve your SEO. All right. So if you have a blog, this is a great idea, as a matter of fact, to uh, if you post that blog onto LinkedIn, for example, or something like that, have that traffic go back to your website because that's going to drive it up and you're going to have more, um, you know, it's going to build up your SEO. So you're going to have more traffic to your website. So have everything kind of funneling, funneling through the same channels. All right. Uh, so having those high quality backlinks, ultra important. Okay. So one other thing here too is you, you want to uh, utilize free search listings, all right? So part of an SEO strategy that can help drive traffic is to add your business to free search listings. Uh, leveraging free search engine listings and directories is a low cost method that has worked for years. This increases the visibility of, your, of a business uh, and it allows you to link back to your website, add a phone number and add an address in most cases, okay? Uh, keep all of your search listings concise and branded the same. Don't don't use different phone numbers, URLs. Uh, the way you know the way your business looks. Uh, I'm sorry. This way, your business looks the same across everything. So you want to make sure that everything is very consistent. All right. Um, there are also tools that can help you. Uh, you know that you can subscribe to that'll help you do this. Um, they'll set up your search uh, listings. They'll, they'll allow you to manage them all in one place. You don't need to use them, but it's important to know that those things do exist. 
uh, and then you are able to use them. I know from my personal experiences, this is something that you can Google very quickly. Uh, you'll be able to list your businesses in different areas. So you don't like, you know, like what I said, you don't really need to use these other services, but uh, it's available to you. All right, so managing your brand uh, reputation online. So building your brand is a process that never stops. So you should always remain consist consistent with this. Uh, make sure that your social media channels are consistent across the board when it comes to your brand message, et cetera. Uh, so make sure that everything just aligns perfectly. Uh, listen to your customers and consider their feedback. This is going to help you evolve your brand, all right? Okay, so this is a bit of a fun slide here. Um, so these are the social media and advertising do's and don'ts. All right, so I've comprised a few things here that you should really uh, focus on and a, and a few things that you should really stay away from. So let's let's take a dive into the do's. Number one, be honest. Uh, be sure that you're honest within, with the value that you're providing. Uh, another thing here too is be respectful. Understand that some may not agree with your message. Be respectful of their opinions, all right? Uh, in ABA, we have different opinions between our own uh, our own groups. Just be respectful. Uh, make sure that you don't uh, misre misrepresent your business. All right. Another thing that's important here is to know your audience. All right. Target your content towards your target audience. All right. So make sure that your messages, your posts, everything remains consistent, and that you're speaking to that specific target audience. Uh, add value. Be sure that you're providing value to your target audience. Make sure that they're getting something out of your posts. It's not just um, about posting, but it's what, what are they going to get from this post uh, or, or your posts in general? One thing that's very important is think before you post. Review them thoroughly and make sure that they align with your company's mission and brand. I cannot state this uh, anymore. This is something that uh, is extremely important. Make sure that everything is, is building up towards the same, because in the long run, this is going to build up your brand. Uh, make sure you're posting regularly. Uh, set a cadence for your posts in order to keep your audience engaged. So in some cases, you might want to set a cadence of once per day. Uh, maybe you want to set something uh, once every other day, maybe a couple of times a day, whatever cadence works, but make sure that it's something that's regular. Uh, why? Because you want people to engage with your, your social media or your advertising on a regular basis. So something that they can look forward to, that they can see, uh, hey, they're, they're pretty active. Also, you want to remain uh, in front of them. You want to stay in front of them so that that way, you know, your business and your brand is constantly on a, on a buildup, all right? Uh, one thing here too, interact with your audience, review the comments. If you're, if you're on, you know, social media, review those comments, take a look at them, uh, interact with them, you know, feel free to, to respond to them. Uh, one thing that's extremely important is checking your grammar. Uh, bad spelling can make your post look unprofessional. So double check your grammar always before posting. Double and triple check, I would recommend. Uh, last but not least on the do's, stay the course. Uh, marketing is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Stay the course in order to reap the benefits in the long run. This is going to be a process. So if you start off with five followers, 10 followers, whatever it is, that's okay. Keep building it up. It eventually will get there if you remain consistent. All right, let's take a look at the don'ts. Don't post any client identifying information. Stay away from posting any client testimonials, pictures, and things like that. We have, as, as behavior analysts, we have an ethical code that we must remain, uh, we, we must stay, uh, you know, consistent on. So, you know, I would, uh, I would recommend avoiding that. Uh, don't make any false promises. Uh, only promise your customers or your clients what you can actually deliver, all right? There's nothing worse than being disappointed as a, cl a client. Uh, so don't make anything that you can't deliver on. Stay away from disparaging competitors. Don't speak illy uh, about uh, your or badly about your competitors. Stay away from that. That makes your brand look bad, petty. Don't do that. Uh, don't steal images either. There's so many sites out there right now that they can offer you royalty-free images. What you don't want is somebody uh, you know, claiming that you've stolen their image 
or you know getting that bad rep of of you you know this is a company that steals images and takes you know things for free that don't belong to them stay away from that there's a bunch of them if you google them you'll see a bunch of royalty free images uh our sites some that you can you can pay for and then some that are absolutely free the only downside to the free ones is that other people are using them too uh so you might have uh, you know other sites that use the exact same image, images as you uh another thing here don't be a ghost uh don't stop posting uh because one one of the worst things here to to do is to go on a social media page and realize they haven't posted in two years um remain consistent with that you know if there's a there's a common theme here remain consistent with social media absolutely do not get into arguments all right if there's people in your posts or comments uh that are you know uh, you know saying negative things about your company or about any others in there it's a bad look. Arguing with people who comment on your post is a bad look for your company and your brand. Stay away from that. Uh, another thing here too, don't be a spammer. Uh, be considerate of your audience and don't flood them with posts. All right. Just be consistent. Don't make those, you know, for me personally, I look at some people that, uh, you know, or, or companies or whatever that they post too often. I want to, it makes me want to unfollow them. Don't be that company. Be considerate. Uh, another thing here too, this is just like all around good advice, but don't post religious or political opinions. Those can be very polarizing for people. Uh, stay away from that uh, when it comes to your social media posts, uh, if at all possible. Uh, and last but not least here, don't endlessly self-promote, all right? Provide value within the content and don't always make it about your business. All right. Uh, basically, just try to add some kind of value, put in there, you know, checklists, put in there uh, tips, things like that. Don't always make it about advertising your business. All right. And speaking of uh, making things, you know, adding value, one of the things that, you know, does add a lot of value is having a, a good, reliable software to start your business. All right. So this is just a reminder that if you're currently considering a software to assist you in your new business, CR Essentials is a, an excellent all-in-one software solution designed for startups and small ABA companies. I highly recommend taking a look at this. Um, CR Essentials offers fast and easy onboarding and setup uh, with personalized support uh, for your practice management and data collection needs. Uh, we also offer free trials of CR Essentials specific uh, for startups. Okay. And before we go over to your questions, be sure to check out our next episode in the series titled Getting Started with ABA Therapy Credentialing Now. Uh, in this session, your host, BCBA Amber Zuberg, will demystify this system, which will include topics like reviewing key terminology, offering tips for outlining individual process, uh, apl application recommendations, and much more. Uh, register for this webinar and be ready to tackle uh, the credentialing process head on. We will also be sending everyone a free checklist on documents and information you will need to start your ABA credentialing journey. All right. One last reminder that this will be uh, that we will be sending out the recording for this episode in the next two to three business days. All right. So uh, I want to give everyone an opportunity for any of the questions. And I see that we have our first question here. Uh, what would be a good cadence for social media posting? Okay, so that's uh, that's something that's, you know, it de really depends. Um, that's not an easy thing to answer. It really depends on how uh, you want to to set that. Uh, there's a few factors that come into play with that. One of the things is, first of all, your time. Uh, how often are you going to be able to post that's going to allow you to remain consistent? Um, but, you know, once once a day is great. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Once every other day is fine, too. Um, it really depends. There's no real right or wrong answer to that. So just set something that you're going to be able to stick to. I think that that would be probably your best bet. Right. Okay, I see some. I see some other uh, questions here. Uh, do you have some examples of websites uh, that can be used to create uh, the website? Um, I know that there are some out there. For example, like Foursquare uh, is one of them. Uh, there's a there's 
quite a few of them. I haven't been, I, I must, I must admit, I haven't built a website in a little bit. Uh, so there's some new ones that I'm sure have been popping up, uh, but do a quick Google search on that. And I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of new ones out there, but Foursquare is a popular one that comes up uh, quite often. It makes building a website super easy. Um, all right, uh, so this is a great question here. How do you propose that clinicians make themselves competitive in a saturated market in a sea of ABA service providers? This is a great question. Um, there's a lot of competition out there. Uh, there's humongous uh, companies that take over. There's smaller companies that, that take over, uh, you know, certain market areas. What you want to do is uh, one of the things that I, you know, I, I always, um, you know, consult with whenever I've consulted with smaller companies is make sure that you're providing num number one, top quality services, make sure that um, you stand out in terms of, you know, your customer service, your client service, people will stick to you uh, or with you if you provide uh, excellent support. You know, meaning that, uh, you know, not only are your services great, but your, you know, your, your service is great too. You're attentive, uh, you know, you're responsive with phone calls, messages, things like that. Those are things that, that can help you stand out. Uh, but more importantly, research areas, maybe that there aren't services. There's a lot of places now, especially in the U.S. Uh, and across the world, really. But there's places out there that they don't have access to services. Consider possibly even... Uh, engaging in some of those areas, because that might be something that might be very helpful. And all right, well, I want to thank you all for joining me today. If you have the time, please fill out the survey. It's a brief one that's going to appear after the webinar concludes. We love hearing your feedback, and it helps us to improve future webinars. So until next time, have a great day, and uh, thanks again for joining me.